Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Stone Block 3. In between episodes, I have gone ahead and decorated our basement part of the base a little bit, and you know what? I am actually quite happy with this. I also reset up the machine that we set up in the last episode, as you can see right here. It is... Give me that back. I, I need that. It is a lot more compact than it was in the last episode, and I have basically removed all the pipes and stacked everything on top of each other. And honestly, I really like how the setup works right here. However, we have an issue, and that one issue is a power issue. If I go ahead, we have plenty of ores in here for this thing to run. Currently, our battery up there is full. If I go ahead and set this, all the machines to work here, we are generating oxygen. In fact, we're not generating in enough oxygen. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, all the machines are now working at a really good pace. By the way, I upgraded these. I gave them all speed upgrades, four speed upgrades uh, for the enrichment chamber, four for the crusher, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. And then f I think I gave two for the purification chamber and two for the separator here. However, that was clearly not enough. I need to produce more oxygen. But anyway, if we go up here while that is running, it is very loud. You can see that we are unfortunately getting drained really quickly here from our power, even though we have all these four sterling dynamos upgraded to reinforced, uh, with a reinforced integral components. And so power generation is what we will be solving today. And it starts with going back here and taking out the power. <laughs> <laughs> because we are going to be needing some power in order to actually I don't think we need power to set this up but ju just to be safe also so we can think it's loud another thing I went ahead and did I went ahead and upgraded all the hammers to diamond hammers and the uh, generator back here oh, that's not what I wanted to do and the generator back here if I can get there eventually that would go to gold however that didn't solve my issue which i very quickly found out and that is because this chest as you can see is full and that was because the funnel that i had before only outputs one item at a time whereas the brass funnel outputs a stack of sand at a time so i probably the chest was full so i probably didn't need to upgrade these at all um oh i i forgot to there we go <laughs> I turned that off. I forgot that powers this fan. I should probably fix that. But anyways, now it is generating items at a much quicker pace. This is from the crusher, which we're getting in. And we should very soon, hopefully, see a bunch of items in here. There we go. Perfect. Now, you may be asking, how are you going to be generating power other than using coal? And, well, thanks to the comments I have been getting throughout these episodes... I realize that Thermal has this thing, the Lapidary, Lapidary, the Blue Dynamo. <laughs> anyway, it is not very expensive to make, like, at all. It is actually very cheap. However, the way it runs is it converts valuable gems into power. So, Prismarine Crystals can be turned into RF, Lapis Lazuli, RF, and each item, for example diamonds, produce a lot more power, obviously, because they are more um, expensive, they are more valuable. Amethyst Jard, 40. Emerald, 125. Leather Quartz, 40. But out of these, the diamond is the one that produces the most. And well, we have these things called chickens. Specifically, these kinds of chickens. And well, it just so happens that I have four roosters, or roosts, roosts? I think roosts. Four hoppers and four diamond chickens. I think you get where I'm going with this. So if I go ahead and just make four, well, first of all, I need to make the components, of course, in order to do this. So four of those, and then I should be able to make four of these <coughs> the blue dynamos. And I can go ahead and access my wireless thing here, and I should be able to grab some energy cables. I don't remember if I have another capacitor in storage somewhere. By the way, we are going to be working a lot with power. At least that is my intention. I'm going to go ahead and make another one of these real quick uh, once i have all the materials that i need oh you can use the lava eggs for this that is 
absolutely awesome. That makes this process so much easier. There we go. That is another basic energy cell and some cables, which is just some of these. I want to get into auto crafting as well, so we can get some of these things auto crafted as we go ahead and ask for a recipe. That would be really, really useful. But this should hopefully be it for the setup or for the initial setup, I should say. So if we have these dynamos right here, blue dynamos, um, <laughs> I should be able to face them in here. Now, I don't know max production, so we'll need to upgrade these, of course. But let us place them down for now. And just for a test, if I go ahead and get a... Okay, I guess I have two stacks of diamonds now. And if I go ahead and grab the upgrades from you guys, because currently only our storage is the thing uh, sucking up power. So if we go down here... So if I go ahead and give this guy a diamond... We are now outputting what seems like, yeah, energy, energy production 40 RF a tick, and this is going to stay burning until it has produced the, how much was it? The half a million RF. We're, we're going to be, we're, we're going to be rich on power after this, but this is then going to run until that has been produced. It's already on 22 RF, uh, FE, I should say. So what I want to do, I wonder actually, if I place that in here, we produce 120 RF a tick. And these energy cables can only transfer 500 FE, uh, 120, 240. Ooh, it's going to be very close. But we're going to be giving these upgrades right here so they can produce a lot more power. We're going to really make this efficient. Um, so it is currently generating 120 and so if all I do is go ahead and take some hoppers and face them in like so. Take the roosts, place them like so. And then take my diamond chickens. And then, oh yeah, I have to actually go in and say ploop, 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 and ploop. And if I just go ahead and get rid of those and the torches, eventually a diamond should be generated. And which will then be put into here. Yep, here we go. Diamond has been added. It's going to burn. And by the time the diamond has been used up, hopefully, oh yeah, more than one diamond will be available right here. They don't even need to work any faster than that. So with that, we basically technically have, well, li unlimited power. The only question is, of course, can we produce it faster then we're using it. Now the cool thing is, of course, we can go ahead and upgrade these even further to the resonant integral components. However, I have no idea what that will take. I have not looked into that at all. Ender dust, diamond dust, lead dust. You know what? It should actually be doable. But yeah, we are now generating quite a lot of power. And now that I think of it, these chickens are actually generating a lot of diamonds. So I might even change the setup and make it so we have more of these on top of each other and then some item cables coming from like the wall over here connecting it all up. I think I might go ahead and do that. All right, this setup should be a whole lot better. I just need to connect it all. Now, one issue that we're immediately going to have here is, of course, these right here will produce 120. These will produce 40 RF a tick. However, this cable right here in the middle only can run or hold 500 FE a tick. So we are very, very well instantly overloading it with power. We are not able to fill this up faster than 500 FE at a time. However, what I did do here is I set the roosters up here with this chest and then the pipe smart and then I added an improved pipe upgrade and then I set the distribution to round robin so that not all the diamonds would go into one dynamo but into all the other ones. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that right there. And it should be distributed equally throughout the dynamos. So that is really, really useful and, well, helpful. So this thing will be filled up in no time. However, the issue still remains. We can't transport the power fast enough because we are generating. Well, let's pretend these are not 120. Let's pretend they are 40 RF. So that is uh, math. Basically, right now, we are producing 800 FE or RF, whatever, energy units. 
And we need to transport that not only to the battery or the energy cell, but also throughout the entire base, especially if I make upgrades for all the dynamodes, which by the way, is my plan. So in order to get to some higher tier cables, which can actually transport all that power, such as the energy cables, which are hardened from the power mod, we need to go ahead and get into energized steel. Now I could go ahead and use the ones that come from mechanism, which in general can hold a lot more and yeah, it, it can hold a lot more, but I really do like the power mod and I do want to get into some of the things regarding the power mod, such as ender cells and the energizing orbs. So we will be setting that up right now. Actually, we also need a bigger energy cell because it's already full. So what I want to do is get into making energized steel and to make energized steel, we need to get into energizing gold and iron on top of one of these energized orbs and then powering it with this energizing rod, which will give us energized steel. And it shouldn't be too difficult to make. First, we're going to be needing the orb, which is right here. And that is going to be sitting right here in the middle. We are going to also, I believe, have a... I don't think it outputs automatically. We will need a hopper, I believe, as well as a chest. Oh, we're going to need two chests then. Two, no, okay, just, no, okay. One, one chest will do. So if we place this here, the hopper, and now we need to go ahead and make these energizing rods. And I'm just gonna make the starter ones because we will then be able to move up, actually, energize. So these are the starter, these are the basic, which is just actually, well, we'll need the starter ones in order to get the rest. Okay, makes sense. Now I don't actually know how many of these I'm gonna need and it's already being filled up with the with the thing that we have upstairs. If I place this here, uh, I can't place that there because I'm going to be needing some power cable. I, I wish I could extend the range of this thing. If I get some power cables here, I'll need to run some power from this thing over to, let's just experiment right here. If I place this here and this here. And if I then go ahead and grab some iron, let's take half a stack half a stack of gold, and I take one of each. I right click it on there. That is doing its thing, however, it is slow. And there we go, we got energized steel. Now we are able to make this a lot faster. If I go ahead and make, oh, need more of those. <laughs> if I go ahead and make one, two, oh, I can't stack them. One, two, three, um, uh, maybe two more. Yep. So if I go ahead and run this around like so, yep, this should do. And I can then take all these. I think, I don't think I have to put them in this configuration. I think I, what on earth did I just do here? <laughs> I missed one. Oops. I actually, it turns out I actually made one too many. Hmm. Can't complain though. Yeah, I think I think I don't have to put them like that far apart. I think I'm able to just put them next to each other actually now that I think more about it. So if I go ahead and now put in a single gold and a single lion, yep, all of these are now working and they're working very, very fast. Which is cool. Now I wonder if I can place a I wonder if I can place a hopper here. Nope, then it's, then it's just gonna add everything. Okay, that doesn't work. <laughs> I need to click it in manually, or I did see, I did see Chosen Architect use something from the, not the Ender IO mod, mod, from the, aha, from the laser node. I think I need an item card as well. I've never uh, played around with the laser node mod before, as in, Ever. <laughs> However, I think I know how this works. So if I right click this, um, this is insert, this is now extract. And then I said this, this is insert. And I th think I can do extract, uh, transfer amount one, I think. So what you gotta do here, is when you right click this, it has up, down, north, south, west, and east. So up, 
would be the extract because we're extracting from the top, which would of course not be the hopper. It would be some sort of chest. So if we go ahead and grab that real quick, place that on top. So we are extracting from the chest and then we're facing north. So on north, we insert into the energizing orb. So if I go ahead and place one iron, okay, it, it, no, that, that, no, almost there though. Okay, I think I have figured it out. So we need to make these counting filters. So if I go ahead and right click the item card for extract, maybe. So counting filter, and then I just put one iron ingot in here and I think, think one gold and I add that no aha it's working now it has the item the filter has to be in the item card that inserts into so on this side that inserts into the energizing orb just like so oops now I'm, now I'm messing it up there we go so now I was able to just put half a stack of gold and iron in and we are now getting well basically automatically made energized steel awesome i should say thank you to chosen architect because that's where i looked to figure out how on earth to get that to work so now with this energized steel i can go ahead and add it to our storage of course need to make some basic um oh some large basic capacitors okay so i'm gonna need a bunch of these first of all maybe make a stack 60 that's fine I'm gonna go ahead and make eight of these. Then some hardened ones like so, 14. And then I can go ahead and make these uh, energy cable hardened. Now I don't need that many of these. It just has to be the center ones right here that gets replaced. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Definitely not what I wanted to do. I don't know what's happening here with the cables. Why they don't all ju don't just stack up? It's kind of annoying. <laughs> I don't know what does that. But oh, the small ones can't connect. Ooh, that could be a pickle. Well, that was a tiny bit of a waste. However, I have gone ahead and made these advanced universal cables from mechanism which I just have enough, which you look at that. And these can connect to the smaller starter ones right here. And I don't know if I can go ahead and rotate config. I don't know if I can go ahead and disconnect these somehow. This is a power wrench, but it doesn't seem to do anything. But anyways, no matter, we're now getting all the power transferred to the energy cell, all of it. Now here's the thing, I could, plug up a cable, like right there, go down and then up and over into all the machinery and up into the storage. Or I could make, or I'm hoping I can make anyways, these ender cells, which I don't know how this is going to work. I assume ender cells are for wireless power. We could go in here, ender cells, ender cells store FE in a wireless network shared by any amount of ender cells. The amount can be increased with end with energy cells. So if I go ahead and make an energy cell, or I should say an ender cell, I should be able to move power back and forth from this specific area and location. So in order to make this hardened ender cell right here, I need an ender core, which I need to energize basic capacitor tiny, a dielectric casing and an eye of ender. All right, I have it all. So we add that to the chest. Well, actually I'm gonna need to add it manually. That is gonna do its thing. And we get an ender core, which I think we can just go ahead and boom. So if I place this down, ooh. Now the question is, how much is this thing able to store when it comes to power? I'm gonna take this out and place this and receive facing up. may need these, what are, what are they called, ender gates right here. Ender gate starter, hardened, yep, I might need something like this. So there we go. Oh, and they apparently don't like to stack either. So in order to place this down, I hold down shift and I right click it. And 
I'm not able to place this down. Hmm. Okay, I figured it out. Um. Don't know how I undo what I just did. But I'll show you again, because I actually have this thing right here, and the cell spirited. Now, I didn't actually go ahead and craft this. I actually got it as a um, gift or a quest completion uh, reward, and I have had it for quite a while now. And in order to get it, you need to create some spirited crystals, which is, well, actually emeralds. And, well, on that front, it's actually pretty cheap to make. Um, but I think it is the second... Let's see. Spi no, power... I think it's the, yeah, it is almost the highest tier. It is right under Nitro, which Nitro, yeah, that's quite expensive. So that is actually the highest tier of Ender Cell that we are able to afford. Now, these things right here, basically it can transfer 400,000 FE per tick. However, what I need to do is to get an energy cell. So in my case, if I want to store power into it, which of course I do want, Let's say I want to get a spirited or a hardened. I want to get something high, and I think this... Oh dear, that's actually... Well, I need to get this, and I need to get... In order to get this, I need to get this, which I can actually get. Okay. I can get this because blazing crystals are from energizing blaze rods. So if I go ahead and take some blaze rods right here... Put it in there. Just one blaze rod at a time. That should now work, except that this doesn't have power, so we'll just quickly have to... Yep, that works. <laughs> Feed power into the system again, so we're now getting these blazing crystals. Alright, I am slowly getting there to get the spirited energy cell. I am now... I have now made the blazing one. And I actually need to do that again in order to get the Niotech one as well, which is huh, yeah, this is this is a big pro. This is this this takes a while, but I want the worst part is I want two of these spirited energy cells. Well, yeah, because well, I want two. You'll see why. I need to upgrade these as well. I think if I upgrade them, they will be working a lot quicker and better as well. All right, I went ahead and whoops, I went ahead and upgraded these all these energizing rods to hardened and watch this before the diamonds took quite a bit of time, but now look at this. Way way faster than before. Speaking of which, I should now have everything that I need in order to make the neotic uh and en energy cell right here, which Oh, now mind, I need, I think I need one more. G give me, give me one more. Thank you. Put that in there. <laughs> I'm not going to go to Spirited because I would need to make one more of these. I can always upgrade these as we go. Oh, wait a minute. I just realized. I think. Hardened. Uh, nope, that's the end of cell. Oh, boy. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the second Neotic Energy Cell. To be fair, it looks awesome. However, it is awesome because it can hold 100 million FE. I don't think we'll need to upgrade anytime soon. Now, what I'm... Yeah, let, let that run. That's fine. Um, what we are actually able to now do... And even when that is running, we're actually storing power. That's awesome. What we need to do now is if I go over to channel 2... I don't know if I can do it with channel 1. I'm scared. I think I can do it at channel 1. As you can see, it says 11,000 FE in channel 1 out of 4 million, and that is because I shift right-clicked, I believe, a basic energy cell into this thing. So if I hold down shift and click on this energy cell right here, as you can see, we now have 100 million FE storage together with the 4 extra million. So I could add another energy cell right here to bump it up to 108 million. All right, ladies and gentlemen, everything is ready for us to proceed. So, what I am going to do is I'm going to dig down here a little bit. In fact, just like so. And I think I'm going to install another elevator just because I can. Elevator. Place it right there so I can just go down here and observe. Then I'm going to remove this flooring right here. Put this back. 
add two universal uh, uh, advanced universal cables right here from mechanism and then I'm going to place this enter cell the spirited one right here and as you can see we're currently on channel one and it is getting filled up if I went to channel two there's nothing happening I could add an enter cell in channel two but I'm not going to I just need the channel one for now and now what is happening is I should probably go ahead and add some light down here that's what's happening at this point in time there we go. If I now go up, this thing is basically empty. Until the enter cell is full, then this thing is going to slowly charge up as well. Now the cool thing is, let's take this uh, this machinery right over here. It's empty. It's dead. There's no power. If I place this, and it's on channel 1, as you can see, it is now filling up, and I'm able to output power from this enter cell. And notice it's not spirited into this machine right here. The only downside with it being hardened and not something above is that it can only output at 10,000 FE a tick. But for anything for us at the moment like this, it is perfectly sufficient. Or, for example, all of those, where they, all these matter receivers, I'm able to now go ahead and get the lowest tier uh, enter cell, the starter ones. In fact, I might make some, and I can now go ahead to all the battery receivers and place those underneath, and then they will have power here from our base. So with that, I think it is time to figure out what to do here exactly, because this stuff, it, it, it has to move. I'm going to be placing this down here, together with the binding card. It still has one million on it, and it is now connected to this, which is going to, this is going to be our main battery, by the way, and if we go down... As you can see, we now we are now on 11 million, and if I upgrade these, we're going to be producing a lot more power. But I'll probably do that off camera because I've already done way too much crafting today. You know, I might actually leave this here because in case I am working on our power down here for some reason, I'm fiddling around doing stuff. In case we all of a sudden lose power, we will always have our coal-generated power here powering our storage however i am going to make it a whole lot simpler i'll leave the battery here as well even i need to remove all of those actually from the downstairs part of the base but yeah if i just go ahead and simplify this a whole lot more this should be plenty in order to keep our oh or maybe not it's slowly filling up yeah i think i think the setup right here is going to be sufficient for all of our storage monitor needs because it won't be powering anything else whatsoever now again I could just dra dra Drag a cable out all the way underneath to all the machines which I could do and I may do However for now because we have the ability I'm just gonna go ahead and get hardened and enter cell right here and then I'm just gonna Yeah, I'm, ju I'm just gonna get some cobblestone I think Plug this hole up for now. I'll make this pretty eventually. <laughs> Plug that hole up, and all I gotta do really is go ahead and place the ender cell right here. Make sure it's on channel one, and boom! We're now getting power to all the machinery, including the infusers and everything that we plug onto this network, all powered from this place right here. Guys, I think this is mission successful. Also, we started by setting these dynamos up. They're now filled, pretty much, with diamonds. I don't know if the chest is full. It's not. But it's keeping track pretty well, I'd say. <laughs> They're basically full. Output is at 100%. That's awesome. And again, I'm going to be upgrading these in between episodes. Also, this is cool. I can... ...muffle and unmuffle things, but I do generally like to listen to the machines, even though it is extremely loud. But guys, I think with that, that's going to do it for this episode. We did a lot. I hope it was also helpful if you're looking into some of these things. Definitely was for me. I learned a bunch of stuff doing this. This is still filling up. We're at 22 million FE and nothing is going to stop this. In fact, it's only going to go faster once I upgrade all of these dynamos in between episodes here. But guys, we now have infinite power. Power is, situation is pretty good. I might make some more ender cells as well in between episodes. 
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a like, subscribe if you're new so you don't miss the next episode. Enable those notifications as well if you haven't done so yet. Do we have anything new in here? We have had, but I've made sure to take it as we go. Now in the next episode, I would love to explore a little bit more in... Well, honestly, the, the nether dungeon over here was actually fairly easy, so I might make some potions and then go ahead and raid most of this or a bunch of this in the next episode. I'm also really interested to getting this, but I think I'm more interested in this so I can get more blaze heads, so I can get more blazing blood, which I have right here. I, sh I should have. Yes, right here. <laughs> Liquid blazing blood, I cooked up two blaze heads, and I want more because I want to get working towards getting some refined obsidian armor because that is going to be a whole lot better than what we currently wear. But guys, that's going to be it for this episode. I really hope you have enjoyed. And until next time, have a wonderful day and goodbye. <laughs>